Self-esteem and its benefits in building positive relationships with peers is seen as crucial to success in personal, social and health education. This programme will visit two West Yorkshire schools, Riddleston St Mary's C of E Primary and Salt Air Primary, to focus on the ways they're working to raise the self-esteem of pupils. We'll show how three well-established techniques, the buddy system, school council, and circle time are used by experienced teachers who believe that these methods, when effectively implemented, get real results. Jan Newman is a PSHE specialist who works with schools throughout Yorkshire. Self-esteem is really important in um, children's life skills. It's important that they feel good about themselves so that they can um, value themselves. If they value themselves, they're more likely to want to look after themselves and also value others. It's a well-known fact that if people feel good about themselves and they're comfortable, they learn better. Because unless your self-esteem is strong, you won't confidently tackle new things. Therefore, self-esteem is absolutely essential for the success of the learning process. Both St Mary's and Saltair have introduced a system where the older pupils support the younger ones at lunchtime. At St Mary's, they call them playground pals. At Saltair, they are the buddies. And I thought for the reception children coming into such a large primary school it would be quite a daunting experience. And I felt it was very important that the older children would act as role models for the rest of the pupils in the school. And so I suggested that we set up a buddying scheme at lunchtime. Last year, those, the year sevens who were in a different school now, they was doing it and I thought it was really fun because they were helping me when I was had problems and that. And I just volunteered because I thought it was good. They actually apply to be a buddy, they fill in a, a job application form as it were. Um, the buddies are then selected and we do two sessions of training. Um, we just help people around the school and like if they have any problems we help them solve it and stuff. And if like they're upset we try and make them a bit happier. I think for the younger pupils they enjoy playing with the older children and I think it makes them have a more positive relationship with the older children. together and friendship and stuff and if they do fall out try to make them friends and play games and stuff. The younger children do benefit by having a big brother or sister kind of child in the playground. Hello, do you want to play a game then? If someone's lonely and uh, they're really lonely and no one's playing with them, the playground pals can go play with them and make them feel better. For the Year 6 pupils who take on the responsibility, um, I think it makes them feel that they're valued. It's, in a way, empowering the children. They opt into it, they understand and negotiate their rotors. Today I'm on Scooper Tour. Next week I'll be on Leah Playground at lunchtime. And the other week I'll be on Dining Room. And then the other week I'll be back on Scooper Tour. We make sure that nobody goes in to mess around. They decide to think of others and help others. And, um, you know, that helps the self-esteem, helps them to grow as people. In the past, we found, and I think still is too, they really think of themselves as being on staff. And we teach, like, little children stuff, and we, we're like teachers instead of pupils. They regard themselves as a team in school, just like the staff are a team in school, just like the dinner ladies are a team in school. So they got a sense of identity. And that, that made them feel, I think, quite grown up. If we eat all that, I'll be about to stick a letter on, yeah? Yeah? 
Goodbye. You all right, David? Yeah. Make sure you're a good role model because you've got to look after them and you can do your own thing. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you with. Ah. And the wolf gobbled a little bit red and up all in one. It's all about social competency. It's getting on with others. It's a well-known fact if children know how to get on with others, they are more able to make assertive choices for themselves in an appropriate way. Salt Air has a well-established school council, which teachers believe has enormous payoffs for the pupils' self-esteem. We're into our third year of the school council now, and it was felt really that the children should have some kind of voice within the school. And we set it up from years three to six. Each of those year groups have a boy and a girl who are elected by their class. And each of those year groups feed back to the younger children. Is there any ecologies around? Salt Air has invited several pupils from another local school to see their school council in action. We set up our school council probably just not quite a year ago now, and now we've got the thing going. It's nice for the children to come across, see how another council works, and also to talk to the, their, their opposites, basically, on the school council and get ideas and uh, see how we can move our council forward. I think year six have been having problems at lunchtime, haven't you? Would year six just like to speak about that then? A lot of the boys want to play football every day and they have been doing that for quite a while. But um, a lot of other people don't want to play football, want to play in sports like rounders and cricket. The bottom. I know a lot of them have said it's made them feel more confident because obviously they've got to speak in a group. And I think that also has developed the self-esteem because obviously their opinions are being valued. And, uh, and acted on. I'm five. We take turns to play football for each day. I was wondering if we could have a football week um, around this week and like some sports week. When they've seen something that they think is important and they see that discussed and then decisions taken in the light of that, then of course that raises the self-esteem and that they realise that they are um, a very important cog in that, in that cycle. Whether you think it would be to have one day football and the next day not, or last year, the year six had half the pitch was football and half the pitch was something else. There were two alternatives there. I think to make it clear that it's a non-football day, I think you need to put the benches in the middle of the football pitch or something. I'm very impressed by the, the way it does empower children and, and also that they can be part of the decision-making process and, and realise what the limitations may be. I've talked to Mr Collins about some of the games in the playground and what I've asked him to do is to ask the teaching staff to include in their planning some playground games so that when you are doing some PE lessons you will be taught some playground games because part of the reason that children find it hard is they don't really know lots and lots of games to play to think of which are different to football so that will help you I think. The other thing to remember is what Mrs Wilkinson said. Um, Annette talk. Wilkins conducts circle times with all age groups at Saltaire. Big animals, aren't they? Why Today she's working with a class of year two pupils and aiming to raise awareness of their strengths and weaknesses. Before we begin, let me remind you of the rules. Whatever we say in our talking circle this afternoon is private for us. If you're wanting children to open up uh, and express what they think is a weakness in themselves, then they've got to be confident uh, that it won't be passed around the playground. My favourite animal is a tiger. My favourite animal is a pig. The first two, three, four questions would be something really easy, just so that the children relax and get used to speaking in the group. I don't like dogs. Don't you like dogs? And yet lots of children here said that they did like dogs. Why don't you like dogs? Because um, I don't like them biting me. It's important that we say to children that it's OK to have different thoughts and ideas. And also, it's important that children feel special and unique because they need to realise that, well, they are unique and that there's nobody quite like them. One thing I don't like about school is when I'm on yard duty and children come up to me and they start telling tales about somebody else. 
It's a very good environment to solve children's personal disputes. I beat up my kitchen, my friends leave me out and I have to sit in the good bench all the time. Right, so, well, let's think about this. Why would your friends leave you out? Because William's always been bossy and he always plans to get, to get me out of the game. So, what, what do you do if you think they don't want you to play? I just go, go out of the game. You go out of the game? Who's a good friend of yours at school? Oh look, some children are putting their hands up. That's nice to know. Well, I think you are doing exactly the right things. Because if you fall out with your friends and you think that they don't want you to play, we do have a buddy bench, don't we? And you go and use the buddy bench, you good boy, that's a really sensible thing to do. You've got the perfect arena there to bring in other pupils who know what the situation is and can help to resolve it. Do you agree with him a little bit? Yeah. Can you put that right? If he tries to be more friendly and not so bossy, what will you do, Daniel? I'll play with him more often. You'll play with him more often. Do you want to play with him? Do you like William? Yeah. Well, that's a really nice thing for somebody to say, William. Okay. And if the children have thought about it and actually thought about the consequences of some of the things that they might be doing, they're more likely to understand other people's feelings and how it might affect them and maybe upset them. I am not very good at teaching music. I'm hopeless at music. Hopeless. I think it also helps the children to realise that everyone, adults and children alike, have strengths and weaknesses and have problems and fears and that it's quite okay to talk about those and to help each other. I'm good at building something from Lego. You're good at Lego, are you? It's difficult, really, for people to admit sometimes that they are good at something. It was interesting today because one particular boy, um, who I perceive in school as being a confident child, couldn't think of anything good about himself. And that's when peer support becomes very important. So you can ask the rest of the group, what do you know about this child that you can bring to us now that would help him feel better? The skills that they learn here in being able to express themselves and, and becoming more confident within themselves, they'll be able to take those skills out of schools and use them as young adults um, for a long time. The building self-esteem is gradual. We do it all the time. T teachers do it all the time in school. It, is, it isn't just done in a lesson. It's done by the very way we talk to them and interact with them. And PSHE is not an isolated subject. It's how everybody interacts with everybody all the time.